Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well, I hope you're staying safe. It's crazy that we're still in this mess, but we continue to push through. So today's topic that we're going to be discussing is Disney Channel original movies, with a couple in particular. And I know what you're thinking. Cameron, didn't you just turn 29? Isn't that a little old to be watching old children's movies? And I say to you, you know what, I'm an adult, and I can watch whatever I want, whenever I want. You know what, if, if I want to stay up past 10, I'm going to do it, okay, Dad? Oh, I forgot I was filming a video. Got a little cut up there. Whoops. So recently, Amanda and I watched a couple Disney Channel original movies, and it was big time nostalgia bomb. So I figured I'd wear a little, little 90s uh, clothing for you for the vid. So the movies that we watched were Brink and Smart House, which were both in the late 90s. These were a lot of fun to watch, so we'll definitely be watching some in the future, and who knows, maybe we'll uh, make some videos about this in the future. That is, if you like, subscribe, leave a comment, hit that notification bell, you know what you fam. So that's what YouTubers do, right? So the first movie that we watched was the 1999 film Smart House. This is about a family that wins a contest to move into this new state-of-the-art, technologically advanced smart house. Ben, the son of the family, entered them into the contest to fix their problems of day-to-day -day life due to the fact that they no longer have a mom. But after a short while, Ben's dad gets the hots for Sarah Barnes, the designer of the house, and Ben gets upset, overrides the controls, and removes the safeguards of the smart house to act more motherly and to fill the spot of mom. I don't know, I guess he's like a tech genius, so he's able to do that, but... We continue. So then obviously chaos ensues and the smart house pretty much becomes sentient and all hell breaks loose, but they're able to talk it down essentially and it understands where they're coming from and then they're able to stop it. So it's a fun, wacky, you know, kids movie with this, you know, super technologically advanced house. Um, but it's really cool to compare, you know, to stuff now because this is over 20 years ago. Uh, so yeah, let's look at some of the things that the smart house can do. So the biggest thing about the house is that it's essentially like a super Alexa, um, aside that it's AI and it can learn anything about the people living within the house to meet all their needs. So to start the movie, you literally see a little bit of the capabilities of the house. Um, it actually has like a Dr. Octopus type arm, like, like out of Spider-Man and it uses it to intimidate the paper boy. <laughs> Monitoring your accuracy from now on. So, and then when the family actually moves in, it takes a microscopic blood and tissue sample. So then in a matter of seconds, it breaks down the DNA and it's able to tell who the person is, literally tell all of their physical attributes and body temperature, and it knows all of their medical history. Whoa. How is this not being used in like a hospital or something? Couldn't this put, like, potentially save lives? That technology seems pretty important. Literally, it's like one of the first things that they show in the house and it's a potential lifesaver. And they're like, man, nah, no, nah, we'll, we don't need it in the hospitals. We'll just, we'll just put it in the house. So one of the next things that you see is that you can take a wall and pretty much create any environment that you want. So if there's a video or a movie or like a scene or like um, just some kind of environment that you want to be in, it can literally generate that on any wall in the house. So pretty much like a giant TV, but your entire wall. Could you imagine being like a teenager in this house and just pulling up any video you want on a giant wall in your room? I wonder if like Ben was looking up like a bunch of porn or something. <laughs> I mean, no, he was he was playing video games. Like it's it's Disney Channel. He's definitely just playing video games. <laughs> oh. Want to play another one, loser boy? <laughs> And so they go into the kitchen for the first time and literally from Ben speaking, it's able to know the fruit slash fiber intake, protein levels, and that he has been eating too much refined sugar just from speaking. And you ask, how the hell would it do that? Her atmospheric kitchen sensors act as instant breathalyzers and break down your entire diet. Atmospheric kitchen sensors? I don't know about that. And on top of that, it can pretty much make any meal from like a large menu that it provides in a matter of seconds. 
And I have a lot of questions about the kitchen and like the food related stuff. So does it have like a bunch of food just prepared all the time and then it just like super nukes it like a microwave, like a super powered microwave and then it's just ready instantly? Well, wouldn't that waste a lot of food because you just have to have all this different food ready at all times? Do they have to go to the grocery store or does it somehow pick up the groceries itself? I don't know, but we move on. Oh, whoops, Angie drops her smoothie. Oh no, Angie, that's gonna make a stain. Uh, Tony Mays here for OxyClean. Don't just get it clean, get it OxyClean. RIP, Billy. Uh, no, it's not gonna leave a stain because there's freaking floor absorbers in the house that magically suck up anything that lands on the floor. And they show it's not even just liquid later on. So Ben throws a party when his dad is out on a date with Sarah and Literally a few minutes before his dad gets home so that he can clean up and not get in trouble Him and Angie just take everything and throw it on the floor Just throw it all on the floor And then it just magically disappears floor absorbers <laughs> So yeah, the house can pretty much do anything at this point And this is just the beginning of all the things that the house can do it has a biorhythm analysis to pick out clothes that each person would wear in the house. It decides how they would like to be woken up in the morning, whether it's a game-winning shot or a rooster calling. They have video chat well before Skype, an entire virtual golf type thing set up. There's cameras throughout the entire house, but it's not watching everything. If Pat's always keeping track of us, does she follow me, you know, into the shower and everything too? I've programmed Pat to be very discreet. And it even has like a lockdown feature that could seemingly withstand a missile strike. And when the house is going insane, it literally creates a tornado in the house. So... Dad, come here! Everybody get down! Is there anything this house can't do? I digress. There's a million other things that the house can do pretty much, but... Movie's great, it's a lot of fun. It's a kid's movie, so it's silly, obviously, but let's move on to the next one. So the other movie that we watched was the 1998 film Brink. And this was also one of my favorites back in the day, but it's a lot more simple to explain, so I'll just break it down real quick for you. This movie is about a young inline skitter named Andy Brinker, AKA Brink. Brink, I love that, Brink. <laughs> that plans to enter a skating competition with his friends. But when his family is in need of a little extra money, he secretly joins a rival skate squad, Team X-Blade, and works at a dog grooming shop to help pay out the bills. Because of this, he never has time to practice with his friends, and when they find out he has been lying behind their back, they kick him off the team. In the end, they forgive him, though, and they let him rejoin the team to beat the rival squad in competition at the end of the movie. So this one was a lot of fun watching again because it actually all takes place in the Los Angeles area. And because like I now live here, it's just great to see all the places that they shot and I can just like kind of pinpoint little locations and where they filmed. So some of the things that I realize now that I'm a little bit older is the portrayal of Rank and how they portrayed this character. Yo, what's up fam? He's such a Cali like surfer bro, just kind of gives off that vibe, like, you know, like the vibe of like a stoner. <laughs> that was pretty dope, huh? <laughs> but without the weed, obviously, because it's Disney, obviously. Personally, I think it's fat. I I'm mad cool, right, guys? Absolutely oh, beautiful. Yeah, I think it's totally. great. So another thing that I learned from rewatching this is that the dad in this movie is just a total asshole. Watch it. What up, dad? English. That up. Oh! Pretty much throughout the whole movie, he's just a dick to Brink. Who are you? What have you done with my son? Me? Yeah. Talk to Brink? And by the end, he's like barely redeemable, honestly. <clears throat> Come on, let's uh, split for the pad. Another thing that I learned, but really it's relearned because I could never forget this, is that they refer to themselves as soul skaters. And they say this about a thousand times in the movie. Soul skaters. We're soul skaters. We're soul skaters. Yeah, go soul skaters. Soul skaters. Yeah. Nothing we can't do. And another thing that I kind of realized is that I kind of bear resemblance to the main antagonist in the film, Val. But I, I don't know. I, I, I don't see it. This movie wasn't nearly as bizarre as Smart House, but there was definitely some funny moments. 
Like when Brink enters a competition with the other skate team and his only disguise is just to wear some sunglasses. Going with the old Clark Kent routine I see. All right, big competition. All right, don't get psyched out. Oh shoot, what if my friends come? They'll notice me. Oh. Perfect. Another thing that happened is like when uh, they found out that Brink was joining the other team to make some money, they called him a sellout. Skating for money. A sellout. Great, now how am I gonna pay for the mortgage? Which didn't really make a lot of sense to me because like isn't that the goal in life? To do what you love and to make money doing it. I mean I guess they're soul skaters, we gotta pay the bill somehow. That's a lot of money. There's also another part where Gabriella gets hurt when she tries to race Brink after they kicked him off the team. Ah! And after the fact, when Brink goes to check in on her, everyone's treating her as if she's about to die or something. What is she doing? Thank God. Gabrielle is doing fine. Nothing's broken. The doctor says she needs to stay in bed for a while. I mean, yeah, she fell and got scraped up a little bit, but it's not like she got hit by a truck or something. Plus, because it's a Disney movie, they're going to promote safety, so every character's wearing a helmet, elbow pads, knee pads, wrist guards, pretty much any pad you could ever even imagine. But I'd say the funniest thing that I noticed from this movie is that some of the characters specifically X-Blade. They think that they're the baddest dudes on the planet because they're rollerbladers. You know which rollerbladers get made fun of? Specifically by skateboarders? Psst, I'll give you the answer. It's a lot. I mean, I kind of even learned this as a kid because I grew up around this time and, and my brother actually was a pretty good rollerblader with his buddies and they all quit to skateboard. They all quit to ride skateboards because it's not cool for anyone to ride rollerblades over the age of 10. Anyways, another fantastic find. It was a lot of fun to watch. And if you were a fan back in the day, I'd say it's definitely worth a rewatch. It was cool and it was so sweet. So both of these movies are pretty different, obviously. But there was one similarity between both movies. Do you know what it is? Yup, you guessed it. The sister of the main character in both movies is played by the same girl. I had like totally forgot that she was even in Brink, but she pretty much plays the exact same character in both movies. Hey, can I give you some advice? Skate better. Anyways, this was a lot of fun making, so I definitely think we're in the making for more of these videos in the future. But this had a theme with the, the little girl who played the uh, sister in both movies, so I need to find like another theme of how the two movies relate. All right, so that's gonna do it, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the nostalgia that is Disney Channel original movies. Make sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Also, wear a mask. I wanna get out of this someday, so please. Thanks, stay safe, y'all.